everybody and welcome to another Pride and Grit Spouse Spotlight. Uh, this is Jen and I am here today with um, someone that I had the pleasure of meeting last fall. You all may have mentioned me talk about the Make Her Retreat that I was able to attend um, in October where I met just some really, really interesting and diverse and just powerhouse military spouses that are doing some really incredible things to support this community and Marilis was definitely one of them. Um, so Marilis is going to introduce herself in just a second, but I'm really excited for you to stick around today and talk a little bit about military life, a little bit about how we handle the stresses that this life puts on us. And um, we'll also talk about some of the resources available to help you through some of those things. So Marilis, let me introduce you and there you are. So go ahead and tell everyone if you would a little bit about yourself. Yes, hi everyone. My name is Marilyn Self. I am currently in Kansas at Fort Leavenworth. I have been a military spouse for over 20 years, so pretty much most of my adult life. So I have a wide range of experiences um, and just memories to pull from in my military spouse community. Um, I work as a yoga teacher. I am a Reiki master. That's a modality in the healing arts. I teach meditation and I teach mindfulness. So all of these th things to say energy is my jam and focusing <laughs> on managing energy and stress reduction techniques are really important to me. Absolutely. For, for those who don't know, tell everyone a little bit about Reiki and what that is. Sure. So Reiki is in the healing arts family. It, it is a holistic approach to stress reduction and anxiety uh, management. So in a typical Reiki session, a person would come in with me, we would chat about where they are energetically, and sometimes that means they are just processing stress or they're processing anxiety or just life in general. And we work together to learn. I teach them um, meditation techniques or sometimes journaling techniques that can help them through. And then the actual Reiki portion is done on a table, like a massage table. Mm -hmm. It is a safe touch modality. So it can be hands on or hands off, but they are in, in safe touch places. And what's happening really is I am helping them move energy. So energy blockages within their body that may be preventing them from being able to reduce stress or relax deeper. Okay. Um, okay. And Sorry, I was having a little bit of audio issues on my end, but um, one, there we go. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the stress piece. So that obviously mm -hmm. in this life, you know, <laughs> no shortage of circumstances that create stress for us. So in your practice and, and in, you know, helping others, what are some of the, um, some of the things that you really help, you know, in addition to Reiki, obviously, but um, what are some of the other things that you have seen and what have you used to kind of help people move through those stresses? So I will say I actually ha didn't find this bubble of uh, existence until about five years ago. I had... Um, divorced from my first marriage, which was in the military community still, um, and was in a new marriage, again, in the military community. And I knew that I just had to process some stuff. And for me, I wanted to find something that was complementary, something that was a holistic approach um, to processing, to healing, to overcoming. So I began um, utilizing and complementary practices like Reiki, but mm -hmm. things like yoga are really helpful. So I found that as well to be a great way to allow the body and mind to relax, which allows the system to relax and release the stress a little bit. Um, so finding movement that worked for me, mm -hmm. finding intention that worked for me, those were important to me. That's what really made the shift for me. And experiencing it for myself is really what propelled me into the space where I wanted to teach others in my military community. That's really, that's my sweet spot. When I can teach another spouse or another service member ways that they can reduce stress, teach them techniques like breathing techniques. Um, I mentioned meditation as well. Um, these are techniques that they can learn and use lifelong in the military community and beyond. 
So that's really, you know, what is super important to me and what I find most helpful when I am working with others. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, if someone else kind of has a, you know, a, a, an interest in this area, what are some of the things you've been able to do locally to really support your community? Because it seems like you've been really just involved and engaged with not just the military community, but kind of the community at large, the civilian community as well. So talk a little bit about what that's looked like, tra- you know, taking that skill set and that passion and really bringing it to the people that need it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I will say that in the military community and in the small town that I'm in generally, holistic approaches aren't something that are really talked about very often Mm -hmm. or even Mm -hmm. offered as something that's accessible. So some of the things I've done in my community, I have started a meditation series. So we did a seven week meditation series based on the chakras. The chakras are your energy centers. And I taught people about the energy centers and led them in meditation. I have done yoga for my community. So allowing people to connect, just come and try, just experience and see what that's like. I lead different workshops on meditation. Um, A lot of people don't know about meditation, that there are so many ways to meditate. I mean, I love getting newbies in or people who think like meditation is just Oh, it's so much more than that. And I teach at least eight different ways that people can meditate. And, you know, a lot of times they're like, mind blown. I didn't know I could do this. And, you know, for example, I didn't know that running could be a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. So really um, equipping people with these tools and uh, a different mindset about um, ways that you can find mindfulness or find relaxation. I've also taught mindfulness in my community. So exposing people to what that word means. I want to take the mysticism or the mystery out of holistic practices and make them approachable for everyone. Yeah, no. Well, and I think we're kind of entering a time where it is becoming um, a little less of a mystery, you know, there's, you know, now there's apps that can help you with meditation. And there's, you know, in some ways, the technologies have evolved to also support some of these efforts for us to balance our lives a little bit differently and kind of tune into what we need and tune into where we are in a way that, you know, maybe we weren't doing as much before. So it, it is, I think we're in kind of an interesting place for, for exactly what you do. And, and I imagine demand is, is going to keep going up. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so you talked about your military experience, you know, as a military spouse in a couple of different places. So I'm also curious, just kind of your, you know, not just your clients, if you will, but just generally as a military spouse, what are some of the things that you really see folks um, struggling with? And what are the, the, what are the things that you see them doing to really move through that? You know, one of the things we talk about, or I try to talk about here is kind of the idea of you know, not just surviving military life, but really trying to find a way to carve a path and really thrive and figure out what that looks like for you. So what what have you observed, you know, in your 20 years that, that folks are doing that's really making a difference? I think that one of the things that is crucial, essential, and has um, existed throughout my experience as a military spouse is community. So the need to connect with community there you know there are varying views on what the community is like um especially for spouses just entering they Mm -hmm. kind of have no idea what what that means how do i create community but it is out there it exists and if it doesn't exist i promise you can create it i can't tell you how many groups i have created Mm -hmm. because i just Mm -hmm. liked doing a thing and i figured that there's got to be someone else that does too and there is so for me, community is the, the thing that has um, persisted and that I have seen everywhere that I have gone. Now, um, personally, as a in my work field, I am absolutely an extrovert. In my personal life, I'm definitely an introvert. So it takes a lot more energy for me and even a little bit more courage mm-hmm. to go to a social <laughs> setting, just you know, to a, a social gathering or to even to a community barbecue. But what I would say is I encourage everyone to do those things because there is connection available and connection connection is so 
important for your mental health and your well-being because there are other people in there who are interested in the things that you are interested in and you've got to push a little bit past your comfort zone to make those connections. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's, that's so true. That's and so um, I think really an important piece. And I think it's funny in the military community because I think because we, you know, many of us kind of jump in and sort of make these instant friendships because that's kind of what's needed to build that community. I think there's this perception that we're all sort of extroverts. And, and the reality is a lot of us are really pushing to do those things. They're not natural. They're not, you know, like they, they do take courage. They do take, you know, kind of stepping outside your, your normal comfort zone. Um, but sometimes that, I don't know if that's always seen and, and, and recognizing how hard that is and how that does, um, you know, it does take, you know, that, uh, take effort if you will, obviously, but it, it just, it takes a lot, at least for me, like, you know, maybe like you, it takes a lot out of me if I go to a big event and I, and I really take the time to reach, to like talk to people without them talking to me, like that's really hard for me. And, and when I yes. do that at the end of it, I, like I had, a, you know, I enjoyed it, but oh my gosh, am I exhausted at the end of it. And so I have to create <laughs> yeah. that opportunity to recharge so I can then turn around and do it again. Um, mm -hmm. And so it, it, you know, I think for us introverts and, and I think introvert or extrovert, there's challenges in military life, but um, sure. certainly speaking, you know, for, for myself, that is one that, you know, always having the energy to be able to put forward that extra step is, is not always easy. Um, but maybe, maybe I need you to help me with my energy and then that would help. <laughs> oh, you there? Oh no, Alice. You are frozen. There, there we are. Oh, there you are. Okay, good. <laughs> you can hear me now. Yes. Okay, good. Um, so one last kind of, not last, but one other angle I wanted to talk about is in your business. Oh. Um, can you hear me? You're, okay, there you are. Um, in your, so in your business that you've created around this passion that you have, Talk a little bit about what that has been like, because I think the other piece that is important with these spotlights is, again, to give people, if someone, you know, has a passion they want to follow, to give them a little bit of a sense of, of what was the path someone else walked down to be able to turn this into their own venture and their own business. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? Sure. I would say that this, uh, the military spouse, uh, Military lifestyle space is so unique for um, a person who is on an entrepreneurial path. Definitely has challenges because we have to make sure that we are able to have something that is portable. But my encouragement is to people what you know when they approach me about it is why not now? Now is the perfect time. There will never be a time where everything is all the stars are aligned and everything is is perfectly set up you've got to take the first step you've got to begin with just i'm passionate i'm just going to go for it mm -hmm. because you won't really know unless you try right. so that's another thing that that just takes kind of a little bit of a a little bit of sense of adventure and a little bit of courage sure. and chances are you will thrive i cannot tell you just from the maker retreat and in people i've met after that if there, whatever there is, whatever industry, whatever, there is a spouse, military spouse for it, I promise you. I am, I, there is not a thing that I need for my business or my personal life that I can't find a, a military spouse that is able to make it happen for me. So that's one thing that's incredible. The entrepreneurial spirit among military spouses is great. And I, for anyone who's trying to go down that path, you will absolutely find support and encouragement. I have not had a back turned on me at all, ever, and reaching out to people. Yeah, no, it's it's so true. Yeah, and you, I mean, you're doing really amazing things. So it's um, it's really, it's fun now that I know you to get to watch, you know, how you're evolving your business and, and how you're um, kind of, gaining, gaining additional footing in all these different places. And, um, so it's, 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 it's fun. It's fun to champion other military spouses. I mean, that's part of the, the beauty, I think of the community is that there are so many champions within it that want to just support other people, um, that are, that are just trying, you know, right. They're just putting themselves out there and, 
mm-hmm. trying to figure it out. So no, it's it's super fun. <laughs> Um, yes. Let's talk for a minute from a resource standpoint. Um, obviously, yourself, if folks are local in Leavenworth, and um, let's talk a little bit about where they can find you, but then let's also talk a little bit about some of the ventures that you're a part of that might be good resources for folks who, you know, just want some additional ideas about how to manage stress and how to, you know, sort of focus on their well being. Mm hmm. So definitely, um, I I will say that I work with people locally and I work with people worldwide. Mm. I work with um, active duty service members overseas. So I definitely can work anywhere. But local resources, you should check out plenty of local resources. This and and you have to find what resonates with you. That might be your religious services or your spiritual community. Um, there are many resources tied to. Um, I, we are specifically Army, so for us, it's the ACS. Um, right. But on most installations now, there are a, there's access to MFLAC, so military family life yeah, consultants that you can sit with. Love them. Um, one wonderful opportunity, opportunity and resource um, because they can connect you with uh, people in your area. So if you need a counselor for a little bit, um, they set that up for you, and so it's awesome. And I encourage you to just find opportunities where you can practice a stress re- stress reduction, like a yoga or a meditation. And these are, you know, in the community. I I we're very close to Kansas City, and we mm-hmm. see tons of pop ups for meditations and uh, just groups that gather and meet. And again, start a group. Like there are definitely people who want to connect and and participate in the things that you're interested in. So these are beautiful ways and and step out of your comfort zone, make connections, yeah. find that support. No, that's good. That's good advice. Um, um. So the other thing I wanted to just mention, because you and I are both involved with it, is uh, independent. Um, both lovers of everything that, ind- that, that Independent is doing, and particularly they've got their uh, their annual wellness summit coming up. So talk a little bit about the work you're doing with them and, and what that's kind of been like for you to step into that arena. Mm-hmm, sure. So I knew uh, one of the things that was really important to me is creating in-person experiences for, for the military spouse community. And I am just lucky and blessed that I am on the same installation this year with the executive director of Independent. So just being able to really speak and understand the vision and how much they advocate for military spouse and first Mm -hmm. responder wellness, it just resonated with my spirit. It was kind of like, you're talking my language, (laughs) which was awesome. So it was really a no-brainer for me to volunteer my time with them. Um, that w- It took very little thought. And then once we could come together and begin to plan these in-person retreats, mm-hmm. that's when things got really exciting. So we are definitely working on that. We are hoping to take it to several different areas where there are installations nearby and bring these in-person experiences focused on wellness to our military spouse community. Yeah, no, I'm I'm excited. The depending on when viewers are watching this, um, it you may have to wait for the next one. But if it's if you're watching it, um, you know when it first launches, then the uh, the wellness retreat that's come or the wellness summit that's coming up in March is definitely worth checking out because it's what I love about it is that it's free <laughs> and it's virtual and you know that yes. um, that is a, a piece that makes it really available to anyone because you can go back and watch mm-hmm. the information later and, and you can kind of take it in when you're able. And um, I'm excited to see kind of what, you know, what comes next month. So um, yeah, that'll, I think that'll be, that'll be great for a lot of reasons. There's some really awesome folks coming to, to as speakers and, and guests and things. So looking forward to that. But I think your point is well taken about the in-person because I think it's one of the things I've found even in the, the work that I'm trying to do here is that sometimes we just have to get in front of other people in order to make the connections, you know, like make her is a great example, right? In order to make the connections that really help you have the people to lean on, sometimes you got to get in front of them. You know, sometimes that, that may be what you need and maybe that's not what everyone needs, but for a lot of us, um, I think that is what we need. You know, we need to be able 
to be right right there with someone to be to to get to know them and for them to get to know us and in a different way and so um, I, I'm excited to see what the in-person events um, look like going forward and we'll link in the in the post we'll link to anything we know of that's coming up soon so you can check them out if they're in your area so that's awesome mm -hmm. anything else you yes. want to kind of leave us with to include how to find you um, but any other sort of parting parting words of wisdom <laughs> Sure. Um, I always say that one of my favorite quotes and uh, that I say to people is you have to go through it to grow through it. So we are all evolving and growing and learning. And it's kind of part of growing up. Like I think of myself as the 21 year old spouse and, and where I am now. And there were many things I had to go through to grow and to become the person that I am now. So I encourage you to experience, experience life, experience our community lifestyle and continue to grow through it um, mm -hmm. because it, it's really a rich community that supports one another. So th those are my yeah, words oh, and, and seek out Seek out stress reduction techniques. Uh, give holistic options a try. I promise they are much less woo-woo than you think they are. <laughs> and um, you can find me on Facebook or on Instagram under Empowered Energy. And I love to interact with people. So definitely reach out, say, hey, let's chat. Awesome. I, I, I have no doubt that folks will find you. So that's exciting. So um, I appreciate you being here today and being one of our spouse spotlights. Um, exciting to see what, you know, what you're continuing to do for this, this community and beyond. So thank you for spending time with us. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate you. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.